how to uh, look at your results from a NASTRAN run in uh, Hyperview. So uh, we've already looked at uh, results in the FO6 file. So you run NASTRAN and uh, so say for example, here's a particular problem. This is the solution to 324 and here are, is the corresponding FO6 file and you can look in here and find the nodal displacements the constraint forces, the forces in the elements, and as well as the strains and stresses, okay? But sometimes you have so many elements in your model uh, that this type of approach might be a bit uh, inefficient. Also, um, uh, it's, it's difficult to, to always, you know, some, you, can, you can massage results a little bit more looking at a visual post processor. So Hyperview is one that will actually let you look at your results like as a picture. And so that's kind of beneficial. It's probably the more typical way of looking at results. Now, uh, if you need to know stresses in particular elements or at particular locations, actually still looking at the FO6 file is quite useful. And that's why we start with that. But uh, I'm going to show you actually actually can look at the results. Okay. So the first thing you need to do is when you set up your input file, you need to make sure that there this line exists in the bulk data section. Uh, this is uh, the parameter is an input card. It can do a variety of things. Uh, in this particular case, we're defining a parameter that affects the post processing. All right. So here's a post processing parameter, and the parameter is set to zero. That means that uh, not only is it going to write an FO6 file, but it's also going to write an XDB file. Okay. So that is a binary data format that basically has uh, all the information in the FO6 file. But that's something that Hyperview can actually load up. All right. So when you have this in line in your input file, it'll generate the XDB file. And so you can see here, here's where I have, uh, where I ran my, the directory where I ran my results. And so you can see that there's the input file, here's the um, FO6 file, and then here's the actual XDB file. Now, this is a file you, you cannot view a notepad. Well, you, or you can, but in fact it's going to be not recognizable to you. So if I were to open a notepad, you can see it has this weird look to it, and that means it's a binary file. Okay, Binary files are faster to read and to write to. All right, so first we start Hyperview. All right, This is assuming, of course, we've, we successfully run the model and we got uh, no errors in the FO4 or the FO6 file, and the XDB file was generated, right? So you have an XDB file that you want to look at. We start Hyperview. Now, this is not HyperMesh, but actually Hyperview. So the icon's the little icon with the, the shaded in elements, not the gray elements, OK? And it should look something like this, OK? Here's menu pick windows. You have pull down menus. And then you also have this sort of work area to, to work with as well. So it's uh, it's got multiple ways where you can do the same thing. but. Uh, most of what we'll do, I actually, I load up the file through here. So we'll be using these buttons here, as well as these windows down in this region. Although, uh, you can also do most of the same up here. This is just the way I'm used to doing the, the, the work. OK. Uh, this button here, the very first one, puts it to Hyperview, and it'll set the window so that you can load your model. OK? So you have to tell it what model to load and what results to load. So you'll see there's actually two picks here. Um, you can actually load the BDF in as the model, but it's probably better to do the results section, okay? As both, all right? So here, you know, you just pick your little menu bar thing, and you can go through and pick uh, the XDB file. Here it is. By default, it's going to put it in both those windows. And then when you do apply, you'll see the model shows up. So here's the truss elements. Uh, we can change the view, look at it at different viewpoints. You can also rotate and pan and do all that sort of stuff, OK? All right. Um, so we want to look at the deformations and the stresses most often, OK? So this is the typical way that I do that. To visualize the stresses, usually you want to plot the stresses as colors on each of the individual elements. And so to do that, 
we actually go click on the contour button. So it's it's this little button here. And when I click on that, the sub window here changes. So first, this allows you to pick what type of results you want to display as contours on your elements, and then uh, which ones you want to use, and then you can actually even overlay some other things to it, right? Uh, so you can actually plot displacement, forces, rotation, SPC forces, uh, but most often you actually want the stresses. So I'm going to pick 1D stresses in the result type. And here you, on the next window below it, you can either pick the axial stresses or the torsional stresses. So these elements actually also generate torsional stresses. Uh, we haven't talked about that yet, but we will talk about that. But let's look at the axial stresses. And most of the other default components work. And then if I hit apply, you can see it colors the elements according to the stresses. There's a contour plot. Uh, you can see, you know, this element here has very little stress. We have negative stresses that are blue. These are the compressive ones. We have positive stresses in red. Those are the tensile ones, all right? Okay, so here you can see the stresses. You can also go into this query menu, if you pick that, and then actually if you pick individual elements, you'll see it'll actually give you the value that's being shaded there, right? So you can pick all these and it and allows you to look at that, all right? Okay, uh, sometimes you also want to look at the displacements. So to plot the deformed shape, we use this icon here, which is the, def the deformed menu, right? So we go into the deformed menu. This will deform the, your mesh according to the actual displacement. So we change this result type to displacement. You can actually deform it to things like stress, which I'm not sure exactly why you would, but so be it. We're going to use the displacement. And then you hit apply, and it plots the deformation. Now, this doesn't look like anything changed, and that's because the deformations are small, and so you hardly can see them. So we usually have to scale them up. So you can see there's a scale factor, and this is the scale factor set to 1. So let's set it to more like 250. And here you can start to see the deformation, right? So there's the deformed shape, all right? Also, you have this sort of animation window, which allows you to like animate the deformation for what it's worth. Uh, this slider like scrolls through the animated deformation and you can actually change the speed with this lower slider. Right. If you want to make a movie, uh, you can do that up here somewhere. Not results plot. I think it's like an export. Export. Nope. Publish. Ah, I should have. I always have to do this. I think I actually, I'll be honest with you, I think it's actually. There's a couple ways to do it. One way is pretty easy. And I think it might actually be this. Image points? No, that's not it. Oh, here, I'm sorry, it's these things up here. So you can either...